Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Mr. Secretary, um, to you and your family for your willingness to step forward and take on this very challenging and critical service on behalf of our nation in this difficult moment, like every member of this committee. Uh, I unequivocally condemn the invasion and attacks by Hamas against Israel, the slaughter of innocent people, the taking of hostages. Uh, and uh, when you are, I hope, confirmed by the Senate, you will take on uh, representing our nation in a particularly challenging and fraught moment with a critical ally. Uh, I'm grateful that our president chose to go in person and have already been receiving messages from uh, friends in Israel and throughout the region about what a difference it makes to them uh, when our national leader shows up. Um, but we also, frankly, have to sustain that engagement through a Senate-confirmed ambassador. It's my hope that we will also confirm ambassadors to other countries in the region. Um, Egypt, Lebanon, the coordinator for counterterrorism, and that we will continue expediting some of these confirmations. We have, I believe, just confirmed ambassadors to Oman and Kuwait in recent days. Um, but all of us who serve on this committee and who have served overseas in different roles know there's a huge difference between an ambassador of the United States, and although there are many talented and qualified uh, career foreign service officers in the current case serving as DCM or as Chargé, um, we need an ambassador. So I hope this committee will take that very seriously. If you would, uh, Mr. Secretary, just speak for a moment about how you would work to limit um, what I think was the goal of Hamas's attacks in addition to terrorizing the population um, to prevent um, any reconciliation, any recognition between Israel and Saudi Arabia and expansion of the Abraham Accords how would you sustain that forward movement? And how would you limit these attacks from developing into a, a wider regional conflict? Um, and how would you work to contain Iran's malign influence? Well, Senator, um, first, I, I said this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, we have outstanding uh, uh, public servants, including our acting ambassador, who are doing the business. Um, and I agree with you, it's important to have confirmed ambassadors. One does not contradict the other. Um, I also agree with the comments that have been made by several senators that, just as an observer from the outside, I think this attack was time to try to undermine the, neutral, the, the normalization process and to make it harder. The way you respond to that is by coming right back as soon as you can. This is not a moment where people can concentrate on, on you know, what the shape of the discussion the day after is. But my view is the way you prevent a terrorist organization by winning is you don't get terrorized, you don't run away, you stick to what's in your national interest, and you work hard at it. It was always going to be a challenging negotiation to get a normalization agreement. I think it will clearly now be more challenging because the public opinion in many places will be at such a different level after this war, and a role we can play as the United States and we've often played, is to bring people together to keep that conversation going. I hope, and this may just be that I'm an eternal optimist because otherwise you give in to you know, the worst of man. I think that coming out of this, there will be an understanding that some of these issues have to be dealt with. And the shape of how they're dealt with won't be the same as it was before the conflict. But it will have to be done in a way that gives Israel the ability to defend itself to protect its people from future attacks like this. And we have to do it with our eyes wide open about the fact that we do have malign forces like Iran that want to destroy Israel. So it isn't easy, but I think Saudi Arabia and Israel were in a place where they had made a decision that this was something very much worth pursuing. And I hope when this is over, we can help get that conversation going again. And I hope members of this committee who are determined to help move that forward will also in a bipartisan way, contribute to it. Before my time ends, I just, my senior senator, um, Senator Carper, was the ranking member on the permanent subcommittee for investigations. And just for those who are pressing you and troubled by um, that report, he refused to sign it. Um, he found that its conclusions, um, in his estimation, were a partisan effort at attacking the previous administration's uh, Iran policy rather than a specific incredible conclusion about you and your conduct. I'll let Senator Carper's public statement speak for itself, but for folks who are wrestling with that in any way, I'd encourage them to talk to my colleague, Senator Carper, who I think is as even-handed, balanced, and bipartisan a senator as has served in the modern era. So 
Um, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to say in response to that. I, 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 I appreciate your uh, uh, bringing that to the attention of the committee. Um, it's a point that Senator Carper has made to me as well. Well, thank you for your willingness to take on this important service, and it's my hope that we will proceed quickly with your confirmation. Thank you, Mr. Thank Secretary. You. Thank you.